Broadcasting live from the moon and back, this is The Coin Chat, the most trusted voice for all things cryptocurrency. Each week, we dissect an important issue and cut through the noise and misinformation out there in the world of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and ICOs, capturing the facts that truly matter to you that will give you an edge in this fast-moving emerging market. The who, what, where, when, and how of what you need to know in crypto to get ahead so you don't get left behind. Now, here are your co-hosts, financial and crypto experts, Yuri Kadal. Steve Good. Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat. Today, joined by my co-host Yuri Cataldo and Morgan Pierce, the CMO from Seba Crypto, a bank down in Switzerland. Although actually not in Switzerland, you are in Dublin, Ireland. So, yes. Morgan, welcome to the show. It's great to have you today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, you know, uh, uh, before we started the recording, we had an, uh, you know, an off-camera conversation and you told us so many interesting things about you that will never condense into <laughs> one episode. So, so where do we start in terms of telling us a little bit about you and how you ended up in, in crypto? Um, yeah, I'll try to give you the condensed versions. So I, I, I studied computer science and economics at university and I started my first business when I was still at Columbia. Um, I started another financial services business shortly after that. I spent a bunch of years in the in the sort of dot com space working for Oracle. I they relocated me here to Ireland, and um, then I got involved with a venture capital fund here in Ireland. And then I did the mom thing, and I stayed in tech until 2017 when you know the little dabbling that I had done in Bitcoin in a few years earlier had kind of started to sort of bubble up and I thought, you know, this is going to be some really interesting technology. I had been watching this space for a while just because I was really interested in it, having studied economics. Actually, I wrote my thesis when I was in Columbia on uh, the money, the effect of interest, interest rate manipulation on the money supply. So I was already in that sort of quantitative easing, angry, you know, thing that we've all and been living. Joined crypto, where it's all being manipulated anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I just, I, you know, I was been in tech my whole career, and I had been watching. Um, we talked a little bit about that game that I was telling you about called Second Life, and. Mm -hmm. I read this article in 2006 that a guy had become a, like a millionaire off of selling virtual properties online. And I just knew that, you know, that money was going to go digital. Um, there's no way everything else in our life, music, books, everything's digital. You know, money, it makes perfect sense. It has to be digital uh, in my mind. It's the only way to eliminate some of the fraud, some of the crimes, some of the money laundering, all that stuff. It's the only way to make sure that everybody's taxed. So, you know, in a fair way. And so it has to go digital and, and yeah. made the decision in 2017 to leave the kind of SaaS, you know, technology world where I had been living for the previous six or seven years and, and retool myself. And I went to the University of Nicosia was the only university at the time that had a MOOC course on digital currencies That's under Cyprus, right? Yeah, yeah, under Andreas Antonopoulos, who... Oh, was, interesting. So you've worked with him then? Well, not worked with him. I was his student um, through his MOOC lectures and um, got my digital certificate um, and then started giving talks. I started giving talks around Ireland, around the UK, and then I got this big gig in LA where I spoke about crypto to 3,000 people and um, and that got picked up on YouTube and hmm. about five months after that gig, but also while I was really active giving talks about, you know, how crypto was going to revolutionize the world and blockchain and what the use cases were and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then I, uh, I got headhunted by, by Seba, mm -hmm. um, the chief of staff. Uh, contacted me on LinkedIn. Actually, uh, it was St. Patrick's Day a year ago, so it's like literally coming up on a year. And I had a bunch of interviews on Skype, and I became very inspired by the CEO Guido Bueller, 
uh, and the team that he had assembled around himself. And it just, I was, they were like, you know, would you be interested in being chief marketing officer for, you know, a, a, a properly regulated, licensed, supervised cryptocurrency bank? And I believe in regulation because hum, humans are always devious, uh, even though we don't want them to be. But they have, they, there's just the side of them that's not going to stop. It's a regulation you in like my mind. Break rules. Come on, Morgan. You know how it that's is. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we find every time little, you know, little way around things. And so I wasn't anti-regulation. Yeah. I'm not a libertarian or anything like that. I obviously do want reform in a lot of ways, but I want reform in the right ways. And I jumped at the opportunity. I got on a plane, flew to Zurich, and got hired on the spot. And amazing. then That's fantastic. amazing six yeah. months, we raised a bunch of money, launched the brand, and uh, and now we're hopefully. I mean, you open the show. We're not. We're not a bank yet, so I've got to make that disclaimer, but uh, we believe that we're very close to receiving our license, and we hope that, you know, we're going to be turning on the lights and, and firing up this bank built from the ground up with uh-huh. crypto at the at the core. Okay. And, you know, it's so been very exciting. Call it would be like Bitcoin savings? <laughs> so, you know, think of a bank account. Private that- keys, or what would they be doing that makes it a bank? Just curious. I know we're diverging a little here, but I'm sort of interested because it's uh, having a bank in crypto is sort of contradictory since we're supposed to be our own bank. So that's true, except for if you think about it, lending, for example, is one of the activities that banks perform. And, you know, I agree that there probably will be some peer to peer lending, but a lot of people aren't going to be in the peer to peer lending. Right. Yeah. And so the only way to make crypto work is have a lending facility for mortgages and home loans and personal loans and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is transaction banking. So being able to send money, you know, from one place to another exchange, fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat. Yeah. um, Story. Yuri and I have talked about in the past on previous episodes about how this is going to get solved. So that's really interesting that you've been behind this as sort of the marketing engine to figure out how to make this come to market. Really interesting. Yeah. Wow. it's uh, the things that I learned along the way, which, are, you know, now when I reflect on the year that I've had have been really interesting. One of the things that wasn't sort of crystal clear to me, but now it's like clear as day is that custody storage, which is the regulated storage of assets. And, I, and the reason I say assets is because right now custody in our fiat world or in our sort of traditional financial world applies primarily to securities. Mm-hmm. And so there's 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 four banks that 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 are the custodians of like seventy percent of the securities in the world, Citibank, State Street, BNY Mellon, and JP Morgan. And the securities market is worth like 115 trillion or something. I mean I'm I'm rounding numbers here and I'm pulling them off the top of my head. But it's rough, right? So the four banks store the physical stock certificates that represent all of the securities in the world. And what's really interesting about the crypto or I'm going to say blockchain and digital asset world is that the private keys in their most safe format have never touched the internet. They've been created offline. Yeah. And, and so custody storage is where you can provide the creation of, of, of privacy keys, of the, of the private keys offline, and you can store them in a physical location in a very, very safe way. And we're talking equities, we're talking actual broad, narrow and broad money, but we're also talking real estate, valuable, all the, 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 I, I was using the term tokenization and I heard yesterday somebody use the word fractionalization of assets, which yep. is a much better term to use because tokenization scares the pants off everybody. And yeah. fractionalization is very logical. Everybody gets it. Oh, Listen, I people are talking that. about fractionalizing how you have a VPN now. So you right. can have not one single socket connection to one place. You can have one connection to multi-places to give you your internet, which is really mind bending because it just disrupts everything in terms of not having a central core that you connect to being, you know, connecting through multiple anonymous, anonymous sources to have internet access to everybody everywhere. I mean, it's just like, my God, this is like, a, and then there's obviously fractionalization of art, real estate. Um, it's been a term that I've seen used for a while, but tokenization and fractionalization do have some differences in my opinion as well. But yes, 
totally get where you're going with this. It's um, it's, it's shifting sand as well. <laughs> it, 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 exactly. Only because, you know, I mean, crypto tokens, everybody's like, oh, this is all this weird kind of weird world. We were talking, Steve, before we got on the, the video here about this new movie coming out called Crypto and in the trailer. Yeah. Let's see how bad we can make it look for everybody by telling a really bad story, right? <laughs> And, and and the reality is this, I mean, what's happening is absolutely transformational for humanity. Yeah. And, and so, 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 so back to the kind of like what I learned at the bank custody, the safe storage of private keys is much more important in the digital world than it is in the, in the traditional financial markets, because everything is going to be digitized. And so the yeah. value of the custody market is going to be, mind-blowingly larger than yeah, the custom sure. market that exists in the so market. How do you get a private key into a bank's vault then if they're being generated on your PC at home and you save them on a piece of paper? So the bank generates its own keys. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, that's that's part of the custody service. Is ah, that I get it, right. Cool. Cold storage keys, are they're, they're created in a deep cold storage facility and they never ever, the, you know, you're, you're, the bank is storing the keys on behalf of the customer. Lots of people, lots of people don't want to worry about their, their, right. their privacy. The vast majority of people just want something simple and crypto is too, you know, as we say, squig, squiggle bracket with all these numbers and letters and people are like, oh my God, I, I, am I doing this correctly? Because it's a little scary when I have to send money to someone, well, not me personally, but for one who's never done this to say, I'm sending this to a zero X what account? It's like, what am I doing? And mm -hmm. for those who don't understand what zero X is, it's the, the preface for any Ethereum or Ethereum uh, based coin. So, you know, but that's always a lot of people just go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Am I, are you sure I'm doing it correctly? And if I send it to the wrong place and blah, 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 and then. How do I know I've received it or sent it? And where do I check? It's like it's either scan. Like, you know, we need to get to a point where we move from the beginnings of technology, like we did in the internet days, to something that's a little bit more usable. I mean, I remember like gophers and FTP servers, and I was typing stuff into like download files, and we moved on to something that was more graphical. And I feel like we've gone right back to that again, you know? And, and that's really a really good dating. analogy. Huh? I, I, I said, that's a really good, and I, I remember sending my very first email over CC mail in like 1990. Oh my God. <laughs> and, yeah. And like, and, and like waiting for the guy in Chicago that had down, you know, and it was like, you know, the, you called your, you know, you had literally had to pick up your handset and put it on the modem. And mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was like crazy stuff. Right. And yeah. so it, you're exactly right. And, and with, with in, in the digital asset world and in the regular world, you know, ultra high net worth, people, for example, they would never think of storing their own keys. They couldn't be bothered. They want a bank. They'd be like, right. to store they what? A, they want a trusted partner to do all of that kind kind of thing for them. And, and for that reason, and for all the other reasons that you've read about institutional money coming in and all the rest of it, a regulated entity that's overseen by you know, a financial regulator that's making sure that all the things are being done right. I mean, it's absolutely a fundamental part of the plumbing that mm -hmm. needs to happen in order for the digital asset market to reach its yeah. full potential. It never will. Really mainstream. We need something, although it contradicts the underlying uh, objective, I suppose, from the blockchain community about who owns what. But the reality is if we want this to go mainstream, what you're saying is we need to move to a place where we start going back to trusting the banks again, even though the whole point was to try to create a more decentralized and trusted environment, some of us are going to still end up going to banks for the same services because it's what we understand. Yeah, and banking's been around for thousands of years. It hasn't always been what it is today, which is this you know, manipulation of the money supply and and ta really taxation of 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 of, of you know of, of the masses in a way that's totally unfair to them by right. devaluing their you know devaluing their currency every day. I mean, I still believe in all of that, but I know that to get from A to B or A to C, I should say that we have to travel through B, and traveling through B means that institutions like SEBA come into the world that are regulated, that are overseen, so that the so that the floodgates can open and sure. the and the big money can come in and things like the fractionalization of assets can continue to mature. That's yeah, so. very true. Yeah. Morgan, you've done a lot of different things in, in your career so far. How do you choose what the next project is that you want to work on? Uh, that's actually a really good, uh, good question because um, 
you know, I, I have spent most of my career, I mean, I worked for Oracle for a couple of years, but I have spent most of my career in the startup world. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my first business right out of, in fact, I was still in school. And the way I started it is uh, we got some programming work, me and this other guy, and then we got more programming work and we got all of our friends programming and we were, we were